tertiary English education, are we producing lifelong learners? So to begin with, I think that learning is lifelong. That is, that concept is self-explanatory. But when we go down the line in history, the concept of lifelong education, it originated in Edgar Faw's seminal UNESCO report, Learning to Be, which published in 1972. And in this report, the learner was given the focus. And this report was very radical at that time because up until then, the learner was not given much limelight. But in this report, the learner's role in the process of teaching and learning was highlighted by Edgar Faw. And this report reiterated that lifelong education is based on four principles. They are vertical integration, horizontal integration, and democratization of knowledge. In addition to that, learning society. And vertical integration includes, it meant that education should occur throughout one's life, that it need not stop after one's formal education. Horizontal integration, it meant that we should include formal as non-formal methods of learning to education. Democratization of knowledge, it meant that more widespread involvement of learning. And the fourth point, learning society, it meant that restructuring the or reforming the educational system. So uh, after about 20 years, there was a paradigm shift. Now why do I call it a paradigm shift? Because the concept of lifelong learning, which Edgar Faw mentioned, it was replaced by lifelong education in another UNESCO report by Jacques Delors. And the report titled, Learning the Treasure Within. And it published in 1996. And this report focused on three principles. They are competition, cooperation, and solidarity. And if you think about competition, and Jacques Delo, he was of the view that competition motivated the learner. Through competition, the learners are motivated and they learn. Cooperation, it gave them a sense of unity. And solidarity, through unity, they work towards the same goal. And if we move on to more contemporary definitions, Wirt and Kendall, they were of the view that lifelong learners possess several characteristics. And they are self-motivation, having forms of progression, aiming personal achievements, being learner-centered, and maintaining portfolios of personal achievements. If we look at another contemporary definition, uh, McAskill and Taylor, they believe that independence of learning and study habits characterize an autonomous learner, an independent learner, which in turn form the act of being a lifelong learner. And the focus of my study, this study attempted to explore whether the undergraduates of the Sabaragam University of Sri Lanka, uh, particularly the students who are at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Languages, whether they have the inclination to become lifelong learners of English. In addition to that, uh, it also attempted to find out whether there is any association between the student's gender and their tendency to become lifelong lear learners. And why a lifelong learner of English out of all the other uh, subject areas? Now, needless to say that English is the most widely spread international language in the world today. And if we take the local context, the constitution of this country declares that it is the link language. And in, in addition to that, the universities, the national universities, they have understood the importance of English and irrespective of the degree programs that the undergraduates follow, they have to follow courses in English. So that's why 
uh, English is very important. The sample of this study, using the simple random sampling, 130 students who had completed their second year of study were selected for this study. And all of them had been studying co-English course, which we call it CEL, for the last semesters. That means the students who were selected for this study, they had completed their second year of study. That means in the first two years only, the students of the Sabaragam University of Sri Lanka, the students in the Faculty of Social Sciences and Languages, they have to follow the English course. After that, it is not conducted as a co-English language course. So our intention is to see whether even after the completion of formal examinations, whether they have the propensity to become lifelong learners of English. Question here. A partial replication of the survey developed by McAskill and Taylor, which is also known as the Autonomous Learner Scale, was used to collect data. It is also known as the ALS. Uh, no content was changed in this questionnaire, except the questions were made a little bit more comprehensible to the students so that they would understand what we ask for. What's the day by? Day by? And the survey included 12 items designed on a five-point Likert scale. And the first seven questions of the ALS examined the student's independence of learning, while the last five questions examined the student's study habits. Results and discussion. In order to analyze the data, SPSS and Minitab were used. Mean comparison, cross tabs, and Pearson chi square were computed for the purpose of analysis. And this, these are the results we have. The undergraduates propensity to become lifelong learners of English. Now, obviously, you can see that the majority have the inclination to become lifelong learners of English. 80 percent of them, while 19 percent of them are not lifelong learners of English. Then the second research question we, which we attempted to find out, we uh, attempted to see whether there is any link between the student's gender and their propensity to become lifelong learners of English. Here again, as you can see in this chart, 78 percent of male students were lifelong learners of English whereas 85% of them were, of them, of the female students particularly, were lifelong learners of English. So you can see the distinction is not very vast. Irrespective of their gender, they have the propensity to become lifelong learners of English. So therefore, no association was found between the gender of the undergraduates and their inclination to become lifelong learners of English. So what can we conclude? Now, it's obvious that our students are lifelong learners of English. Now, as lecturers, what have we got to do? We have to see that they develop their lifelong learning skills and see that they retain their lifelong learning skills, not give up their habits. And in, a, in addition, uh, uh, through this study, pervasive notions of Sri Lankan un undergraduates are negated. Now, uh, Sometimes the lecturers tend to think that when students get absent or when they purposely cut lectures, so we immediately think that our students are not interested in learning. So, but what we can see is that even though they may not attend lectures, they have the propensity to become lifelong learners of English. And in the case of male students, Sometimes we tend to generalize that female students are more interested than male students. But however, this study has proven it otherwise. Whether they are males or females, most of them have the propensity to become lifelong learners of English. So uh, in addition to those, as the participants are identified as lifelong learners of English, a needs analysis should be conducted in order to identify their requirements. Now, since most of them are lifelong learners of English, we have to we have to rethink about the contents of the degree courses that we offer.
as they are lifelong learners of English, we can rethink about the course contents. We can conduct a needs analysis and ask from the students whether they need English for general purposes, EGP, or English for specific purposes, ESP, whether they want special English programs which are oriented towards their relevant subjects. And on that note, I conclude my presentation. Thank you all for your interest.